Hey guys, Professor Dalton here, finally getting around to getting a intro to managerial video up. Stay tuned, please subscribe, I'll have some more of these coming your way, as well as some intro to financial coming on soon. So what is managerial accounting? Uh, you guys just got done with an entire semester of financial, and now we have to switch gears to managerial. Uh, managerial and financial, they're pretty darn different. Um, everything that you learned about financial accounting, why it's important and what it's done for, doesn't really apply to managerial. However, your core basic functions still exist. All of your assets, all of your liabilities, all of your equities, your debits equal credits, all of that stuff is the same. None of that has changed. What's different here is who you're doing these reports for, the time frame, and really kind of what these reports need to contain. For financial accounting, if you guys remember, it was very important that we supply external users, external people that make financial decisions with a historical perspective, a precise capture, right, of the entire company's reports as organized and as mandated by either GAAP or IFRS, depending on who is, of course, the regulating body. But again, the financial accounting function is essential for external reports. For managerial accounting, we're looking solely at internal use. Managers are going to use the managerial accounting information to plan, budget. They're looking into the future, right? They're looking at things of relevance in the future for their segment only. And of course, they're not bound by GAAP or IFRS. They don't have to follow any format. None of it's even required, right? But again, managers use this information to make decisions, to decide projects or products to focus on, for example. So a lot of what managerial is used for is for determining the cost of products. The, well, any cost object is going to be whatever we wish to know the cost of. Typically, this is going to be our products. Our products absorb two different types of costs, direct costs and indirect costs. Direct costs are costs that can be easily traced to a unit of production or to whatever that cost object is. Examples of direct costs are direct materials and direct labor. Let's say we're putting together a little toy car. We've got a wooden body of a car and four wheels, and our job is we buy these from outside suppliers, we bring them in, and we put the wheels on the car and we sell them as a completed toy car. Our direct costs are going to be the cost of that little wooden car body shape and the cost of our four wheels and maybe the little plastic bits that we use to attach those wheels, right? Uh, our direct labor, we have to pay somebody to actually attach those little pegs, right, onto the little wooden wheels and then attach the wooden wheels to the car. We have to pay somebody to do that. Those are our direct costs. They're costs that we can look at the product and just kind of say, yes, I see a car body, I see four wheels, and I see a time ticket where someone had to have put those together. Indirect costs are costs that cannot be easily traced to a single unit of product. Examples of this are manufacturing overhead. Well, what's manufacturing overhead? Manufacturing overhead captures all of the, maybe what you would call the little things. We're looking at the light bill, right? The power bill. We're looking at the janitorial services that supply uh, cleaning to the entire plant-wide facility. We might only have one guy working on little toy cars over here. We might have another guy in, over here working on toy trains, but we've got one janitor to clean up between the two. We're talking about determining the cost of products, right? So when we look at this little toy car, we can point to the direct costs and tell you exactly how much it costs to make, but now we've got this issue of this janitor. Where do we say his costs go? Do they go to the train? Do they go to the car? Maybe they go to both. So all of my products are going to have manufacturing costs of direct materials, direct labor, and manufacturing overhead. All of these costs go into my cost of product. Again, direct materials, the raw materials that become an integral part of the product and that can be conveniently traced to the product. An example here would be a radio installed in a car. Direct labor, the labor costs that can be directly traced to that individual product. An example, of course, the wages paid to the assembly workers. 
The manufacturing overhead, again, are costs that cannot be easily traced to a unit of product. Examples, indirect materials and indirect labor. In this example where we had a radio being installed in a car, we've got manufacturing overhead costs that we can't say exactly how much they cost, but we can come up with an estimate. We'll have indirect materials. Again, maybe we'll have an adhesive that we had to pipe around the hole where the radio sits into, right? To kind of glue everything together. That would be an indirect material. I can tell you that it's there, but I can't tell you exactly, right? The value that's there. Indirect labor is kind of the same thing we talked about before. Our janitors, our security guards, maintenance workers, people that do work on the facility as a whole that does contribute to the cost of production but doesn't directly contribute or specifically contribute to an individual item. And remember your cost classifications. Product costs includes direct materials, direct labor, and manufacturing overhead. All of these things are assets. All of these things are types of inventory. And we'll see other types of inventory as far as classifications. We've talked about it a little bit already. Raw materials, right? Uh, work in process, we'll see that a little bit too, where we've got assets of raw materials that has begun production, right? And they're still in production and we'll have finished goods as well. So we still have the same asset account. Also be aware of period costs. Those are all selling and admin costs that are not absorbed by the product. Those are expensed as incurred. They are not absorbed by the product. One more quick point of terminology, prime and conversion costs. Direct materials and direct labor are types of prime costs or can be types of prime costs. Direct materials are prime costs. Direct labor can be a prime or a conversion cost. For the most part, we're going to call it a conversion cost as well as manufacturing overhead. It's also going to be a conversion cost. And what we're talking about here is we're talking about direct materials being a prime component, right? Again, if we're putting together these uh, little toy cars, we've got the direct materials of the body and the wheels. Our direct labor and our manufacturing overhead are applied to those raw materials, those direct materials, in order to convert it to a finished product. So let's look at some more cost classifications. And again, the point of managerial accounting is really to predict cost behavior. We want to know how much our, our products are going to cost. Variable costs change with regard to volume. This is to say a direct cost that goes into our product. Our variable costs change with regard to volume. If we produce one truck, then we incur the cost of producing one truck. If we produce 200 trucks, we incur the cost of producing 200 trucks. This is different from a fixed cost, right? A fixed cost remains fixed as long as we remain within our relevant range. And we'll talk about our relevant range in just a couple of minutes. But I wanted to kind of give a little bit more attention maybe to the difference in variable versus fixed. As we produce, costs go up, right? When we put a raw material into a product, the cost of that raw material is going to vary with regard to how many of our products we produce. Fixed costs remain, remain fixed. They stay the same as long as we're within our relevant range. Now let's talk about the relevant range for a little bit. Let's think about fixed costs in the way of a warehouse and the rent on a warehouse. The rent on my warehouse should remain constant every month, right? Regardless of how many things I produce, I can leave the room vacant and I'll still get the same cost as if I had the room filled with manufacturing equipment. But there's a maximum to how much manufacturing equipment I can put into this building without requiring more cost, right? So fixed costs can be thought about in the um, rent on a warehouse. I can have nothing in the warehouse or I can have the warehouse full. It's going to cost the same amount. 
Mixed costs have both components, and a great way to think about these would be your power bill. You pay a flat connection fee, right? Just to have the power bill going, or the power going to your house. But you also have a per kilowatt hour charge. For every kilowatt hour you use, you get charged for that, in addition to the access fee. So again, a variable cost is a cost that varies in total in direct proportion to the changes in the level of activity. That is to say, costs that change with regard to activity. But again, keep in mind, our per unit cost is constant. If we pay a dollar for each of these wooden cars, we pay a dollar for each wooden car, whether we buy one or 200. Our cost is going to vary between if we produce one or 100, but our cost per unit is gonna remain the same. Fixed costs are costs, again, that remain constant in total regardless of the changes in level of activity. Whether we produce one or 100, a fixed cost is going to remain the same. If we put it, though, on a per unit basis, our cost will vary inversely with changes to the level of activity. That is to say, our cost per unit will go down the more we produce. So realize that's the opposite, right, of our variable costs. Our variable costs, as we produce more, our costs are going to go up. Fixed costs, as we produce more, our fixed cost per unit is going to go down. And again, looking at mixed costs, my total cost is based on the base fixed monthly access plus the variable cost per kilowatt hour in this example of a power bill. Again, we pay a fixed monthly amount and then we add on to that, which would be the actual consumption, the actual usage of power at its cost per kilowatt. And this is our mixed cost formula. Pay attention to this formula. This is important. It's not just for mixed costs, so you will definitely see this one again. This formula shows how our total mixed cost, Y, equals the separate components of A, the total fixed cost, plus B, the variable cost per unit, times X, the level of activity. We can express uh, really several accounting ideas using this mixed cost formula. So again, keep it in mind, practice it, think about it, let it kind of stew around until next week. Next week we'll put this into some pretty good use. Here we have an example of mixed costs. If we have a fixed monthly charge of $40, variable costs of three cents per kilowatt hour, and we have a monthly consumption of power of 2,000 kilowatt hours, what is the amount of our total electricity bill? Well, again, we have a $40 flat fee just for the connection, plus three cents per kilowatt hour used. Our total bill, Y, equals A, $40, plus three cents per 2,000, 0 0.03 times 2,000, gives me $40 plus $60, total of $100 for our monthly utility bill. And again, keep this formula in mind. We're going to use it for more than just mixed costs. Next time, we'll look at a job order costing system, and we'll look at how to determine that predetermined overhead rate so that we can apply manufacturing overhead. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. And if you did, hit that like button and please subscribe. It would help me out a lot and it'll let you know when I post a new video. Thanks a lot. See you next time.